what's going on guys it's official Andrew Rincon and um, it's Thursday well actually it's already Friday seeing that it's 12:43 a.m. but it's not Friday until I wake up <laughs> anyway uh, so it was the 21st of March just a while ago 43 minutes ago but now it is obviously the um, the 22nd so technically my birthday is tomorrow March 23rd everybody my birthday uh, to on Saturday and um, I came home and I saw a bunch of these on my bed. There's a whole pack of them over there, but for those of y'all who don't know, these are kazoos. And if you are a really deep wrestling fan, then you know about Edge and Christian and the kazoo thing, you know. They play entrance themes. Chris Benoit. <laughs> you know? Uh, you know, Chris Benoit is here and he's really mad. Chris Benoit is here and he's really angry. You know that. But, um... I figured... Well, you know, yeah, it's really late, and I got school tomorrow, but uh, I had no homework today, so, and I went to go hang out with my friends, and then I came back, and I was like, alright, I guess I'll go ahead and make a review. Uh, yeah, it is 12.43 uh, Friday, uh, March the 22nd right now, but uh, this probably won't, this video probably won't be up until later on, like, like at 6 p.m., maybe, or 7 p.m., I don't know. But I'm not going to upload this right now as I'm recording because it's 12.43 a.m. right now. Or no, 12.44 a.m. now. And I'm not going to upload until later on in the day. But um, I want to do a review right now for WrestleMania 20. Um, WrestleMania 20, where it all begins again. I have two versions of it. This is the first version I had, which is the recorded VHS of when it happened. Like, from right when it happened. And, uh... There are no edits on here, no no entrance themes are dubbed out or anything, and uh, let's see, the other version I have of it is off of the anthology, right there, and really the only edit that's on the anthology is Victoria's theme song, which is uh, All the Things She Said by Tattoo, uh, this is really the only edit, other than that, both are pretty good still, uh, WrestleMania 20, where it all begins again, Madison Square Garden in New York City. Uh, certainly very historic. Uh, what a night it was, as um, there were a, a way uh, many championships on the line. More championships than I can count, but uh, we'll go ahead and get to the review right now. Uh, in the opening contest, we had John Cena uh, challenging Big Show for the U.S. Championship. John Cena's first WrestleMania uh, match. He was at Sunday Night Heat uh, at Wrestle, uh, WrestleMania 19 Sunday Night Heat the year before, but that doesn't count because it wasn't a match. And, uh, but uh, but you know John Cena is so hot at this time that they have to they have to give him a push, you know. And uh, and I like Thugonomics, you know. I'm a really big fan of Thugonomics and the Chain Gang. Uh, I'm not so much of a C. I'm not even a C Nation guy to be honest, but. Uh, but I do, I do still respect them. But I like the Thugonomics and the Chain Gang more. But um, so then uh, John Cena and Big Show. It took like I think three FUs to defeat the Big Show, but John Cena got it done. And plus, I wanted to say before the match, he he did a, a funny rap, which which is pretty good. You know, I, I liked his rapping. But um, that was a good way to open it up. I'd say a four out of five. It was it was it was a good opener. There was a uh, a sudden death fatal four way match for the World Tag Team Championship. One fall to the finish. It was a uh, Rob Van Dam and Booker T defending their tag team championships against the Dudley Boys, Garrison Cade and Mark Jindrak. How many? Who else remembers those guys? I'm surprised I still remember Garrison Cade and Mark Jindrak. <laughs> and uh, La Resistance was in there. So. This is okay, I guess. I mean, not really all that much, but uh, I mean, it wasn't as good as the opener, but it was pretty good, I guess. So I got to give that a 3.5, I'd say. And then next we had Chris Jericho versus Christian. Uh, it, uh, with th this was um, built up after Christian betrayed Jericho, and it was po and it was possible that uh, Trish was che was cheating on uh, Jericho with Christian. And then the match ended with uh, with Jericho trying to help Trish, but uh, Trish elbowed him, uh, and it was supposed to make it seem like as if Trish thought it was Christian and not Jericho, 
And so uh, then Jericho got pinned by Christian. And it turns out that Trish did that on purpose. And uh, and then she turned heel and went with Christian. Uh, you know, it was a good rivalry and everything. And it wasn't a bad match. They just could have done better. So I got to give that a 3.5 out of 5. Next was a, a 2 on 3 handicap tag team match. It was Evolution. The three uh, of Evolution, which were Batista, the Intercontinental Champ, Randy Orton, and Ric Flair. Woo! Uh, going up against the Rock and Sock Connection, The Rock, Mick Foley. Uh, returning to Madison Square Garden. And, uh, well, this was Rock's, uh, this was Rock's last match before Survivor Series 11 and his last WrestleMania match in eight years. It wasn't until eight years later that he'd compete at WrestleMania again. Uh, and, you know, you think with the rock in it, it's supposed to be pretty good, but this wasn't even all that great. I'm sorry. Uh, I got to give that a two out of five. And then we had the evening gown match. Tori Wilson and Sable, the Playboy cover girls uh, from SmackDown, going up against Raw's Stacey Keebler and Miss Jackie, or Jackie Gata, as some of you may know her. But, um... Woo! <laughs> this was uh, interesting. It was obviously fun to watch. Fucking evening gowns. And of course, they did it with their evening gowns off. So, uh, yeah. Pretty entertaining, I would say. And uh, just because of that, I gotta give it a 4 out of 5. <laughs> Sorry. Next, we had the, uh, the first ever Cruiserweight Open for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Chavo Guerrero was walking in as the champion, and the other people included Jamie Noble, Funaki, Ultimo Dragon, Nunzio, Billy Kidman, Tajiri, Shannon Moore, and Rey Mysterio. And uh, it was an elimination match, obviously. And at the end, uh, Chavo Guerrero would uh, defeat uh, Rey Mysterio, as those were the last two left. And Chavo would walk out of Madison Square Garden with his title still. Now, um... At first, this one didn't really capture my attention, but now I watch it again, and I figure, this is actually really good, because, I mean, you know, I miss the cruiserweights, you know, the cruiserweights were, were badass, and, uh, you know, we don't have them anymore. I mean, we do have some, but it's not, like, a division like we had at one point, but, um, it was, it, it was, a it was, a, it, it was, a, it was actually a pretty good match, I gotta say, a 3.5, if, if I had watched it again, it would probably have been a 2.5, but, no, no, I gotta say 3.5. Then we had an interpromotional match. Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. Okay. Goldberg, okay, Brock Lesnar and Goldberg had a SmackDown vs. Raw rivalry kind of going on. That's interpromotional, the, the point behind it. But you see, uh, there was so much build-up for it. And, you know, with, with uh, them talking backstage at Survivor Series and then... Lesnar costing Goldberg his chance to be in the main event at WrestleMania when it came to the Royal Rumble, and then uh, Goldberg interfering at No Way Out, and then Lesnar interfering on Raw a few weeks later, and then the SmackDown before WrestleMania 20, Stone Cold invaded SmackDown. Him and his redneck ass, and you know, that's the thing, Stone Cold was the special guest referee for this match, and uh, there was so much build-up, you know, something... You know, there was, this was so, so supposed to be a great match, and they they just couldn't get it done. They couldn't get it done, you know. It took them, after the bell rang, it took them like, I don't know, it took them like, what, five minutes to start actually wrestling? I mean, shit, my, my, my grandma can walk to, my grandma can walk three blocks from here, from this house, three blocks away, whatever distance that is, three blocks before they could get it on after that bell rang. I mean, seriously. And it was, it was a bad, man. I gotta give that a 2 out of 5. No, 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 1 out of, 1.5 out of 5. No, 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 I'll say 2, because, you see, the fans were chanting, you sold out, and the one thing to get their cheers back was Austin to stun, was for Austin to stun both of them. 2 out of 5. Then we had a sudden death fatal four way tag team match for the WWE Tag Team Championships, the Tag Team Championships from SmackDown. The defending champs Rikishi and Scotty Tuhati versus APA, the world's greatest tag team, 
and the Bastion Brothers. Uh, like I said, it wasn't all that, you know. So I, I, I got to give it the same one as the as the first one, and I got to say a two point five. Uh, the women's championship match. If Molly Holly loses, she gets her head shaved. Victoria versus Molly Holly, obviously, and um, it was okay, I guess. I mean. I mean, yeah, these, these these are two divas that have competed in like hardcore rules matches before, and uh, but I don't know, it was, it was okay, I guess. I got to give that a three out of five, and then after that we had the WWE Championship, Eddie Guerrero putting the title on the line against Kurt Angle. So, um, what an amazing match! This match was just amazing. Uh, I mean. I mean, to watch these two go at it, you know, and I was a big Kurt Angle fan, and I was kind of upset that he lost, but then, again, you know, I realized, you know, it, it, it was a good match, though. He had, Kurt Angle has nothing to be ashamed of and a lot to be proud of, and Eddie, Eddie deserved it. Eddie, Eddie Guerrero did deserve the win, and he cheated. <laughs> he cheated. If you're not cheating, you're not trying, and uh, I got to give that a 4.5 out of 5. Great match. And then we had the interpromotional match between Raw's Kane and SmackDown's returning Undertaker. Now, last time we saw Undertaker before this, he was the American badass. But then he was playing the dead man mind games with Kane. And uh, it's showing that he's coming back as the dead man. So Kane makes it to the ring. And then next thing you know, we hear, oh, yes! Paul Bearer is back. Paul Bearer to walk the Undertaker to the ring at WrestleMania in Madison Square Garden. And by the way, uh, now that I just mentioned him, I want to say it again. Rest in peace, Paul Bear. We miss you. And um, it was actually a pretty good match. I mean, it was, it was a great Undertaker return at WrestleMania. Not even a few weeks before, but at WrestleMania. And um, I got to give that a 4 out of 5. It was, it, was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Then, for the last match of the night, we had the triple, no, no, one-on-one -on -one match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Triple H defending the title against Shawn Michaels, and the title disappeared. It just disappeared. I'm just playing with you guys. <laughs> By the way, fans, do not be offended, okay? I, I, Chris Benoit is one of my favorite wrestlers ever. You know, it's just, it's not a, I'm not trying to make it a mean joke, but I'm just trying to, you know, just create like a little pun with it I guess you know don't be offended all right I do respect Benoit well what he did in the ring and everything but what he did outside of course I don't respect that but it doesn't matter it's about what he did for the WWE and uh so Triple H putting the title on the line against Shawn Michaels and Chris Benoit it was a great match I mean and you know it's it's amazing how the WWE wants us to forget about him but with a match as great as that how could we you know and um, it ended with Benoit making Triple H tap out, and that, that was a great match. That That's a five-star match. I mean, that that is a five out of five. Chris Benoit is an amazing athlete, and it was great to see Shawn Michaels and Triple H put on the performances they did in the ring with him. And uh, it, it was just great. I mean, it left me in awe. By the way, rest in peace, Chris Benoit, rest in peace, Eddie Guerrero, rest in peace, Paul Bearer. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much my WrestleMania 20 review, both DVD and VHS, I guess, pretty much the same. But um, yeah, comment, you know, tell me what you think, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, those names will be in the description below. And I'll bring you more WrestleMania reviews as soon as I can. But as for now, this is Official Angel Rincon. It is 12.57 a.m. I gotta go to sleep because I got school in the morning. Good night, everybody.